And um, okay, we're being recorded. Um, I um, reached out to some of our incredible community partners um, that the Big Picture Learning Native American Initiative works with. And they're here today. We're going to introduce ourselves in just a minute. Um, but we want to start uh, in a traditional way. And we have an alumni here from Seven Oaks Met up in Winnipeg, Canada. And I'm going to let her introduce herself and welcome us into the space. <laughs> Thank you, Valerie. Yeah. Uh, hello. I'm uh, super excited to come join you guys. It was kind of like a quick connection, but just really happy to, you know, be able to visit even if it's virtually this year. So I'll start off with a little of an introduction. So Oju, Nimi Gazizo, I'm the Dishna Cause, Megasi Do Dem, Ochi Chako Sipi Dunji, Gima, Ni Mama Dunji, Ebenese Ukichita Kwe. So don't worry, I'll translate. <laughs> Uh, just to give you a little bit of insight, um, the nation that I come from is Ojibwe, so the language that I'm using is Ojibwe, uh, also known as Anishinaabe. Um, that's how we say it in our language, uh, but more commonly known as Ojibwe. Uh, you may recognize something that is significant about my people is we were the ones that um, began the creation story of the dream chapter, so that's something you might be familiar with. Um, also, another Side of me, I am Guarani from southern Brazil, so um, indigenous ancestry down that way as well. But translating, the name of my spirit folk is Dancing Rainbow. I belong to the Eagle Clan. Um, I sit with the Thunderbird Warriors, and I say where I come from is my life giver, my mother, but where my people were confined to is the community of Crane River First Nation. Um, if you're unfamiliar why I say confined, it's because um, you know, in, in our history that our people were forced to be moved into reservations. So, um, yeah, but that's today where my people are. So, I am here in the middle of Canada. Uh, you know, alumni from Seven Oaks Net, love my peeps. I don't know if there's anybody out there. Um, a little bit of insight to where I live, it's in the center of Canada, and we also have the highest population of Indigenous people in Canada. So, Today, post uh, med school, I work with young people just sharing cultural programming and having mentorship and dragging young people out to the bush to do ceremony, and I love it. So um, that's just a little bit of background about me. Uh, to get started today, I have some friends that I brought to come visit. Uh, for ones who really are, you know, animal lovers, I want to share with you that Whenever we have these animals, it's always in a kind, purposeful way. It's rather they're offering themselves, unfortunately, sometimes roadkill or a matter of if it's that animal or you when you're in the bush. Um, and we say that sometimes that's them offering themselves. Sometimes it's us offering ourselves, um, which is not ideal, but my elders tell me it's one of the most sacred ways to pass on. So <laughs> but hopefully, fingers crossed, we're good. Um, but some of my buddies that I have here today, this guy is Clyde. This was uh, gifted to us by a knowledge keeper, and he's from the 1940s. And then we also have our little raccoon buddy, Arctic Fox, and our buffalo here who is visiting. And our buffalo comes to us with our uh, traditional sundown ceremony. So it's very important and sacred to us, and it brings a lot of healing to many people. So through a screen today, I hope that it brings a smile to your face um, and just has some little buddies for you to kind of check out while we visit. Um, getting into it, I would love to share a little bit about a traditional smudge. Uh, of course, if we were together, I would pass that around for everybody to use. But as I'm smudging, I'll kind of explain a little bit about that tradition. We'll have a little um, traditional song and then we'll get into our presentation. But I just, yeah, really happy to be here with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, also, acknowledging this guy is an Eagle fan. So I have him here, but he helps me with the uh, smudge. So... Before trading networks, um, we would just use whatever was kind of kicking around. For us in Central Canada, we don't have albaloni shells. These guys come from uh, the West Coast, but uh, we know that there is trading networks that have taken place before colonization, um, and we have proof of that of different, like, um, archaeological, art, art, you know, different items that have been found along, you know, all different kinds of lands, right? I also want to acknowledge that where I am today is the homeland of the Anishinaabe, uh, Cree, Oji Cree, uh, 
Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, Dene, Inuit. We have a very diverse um, province here, as well as the homeland of the Métis Nation. And so with that being said, we also do acknowledge, um, you know, the treaty territories that we're on. For me, I'm on Treaty 1, but something I would like for you guys to consider is that that word treaty means agreement. And so for us, even in modern times, a lot of those agreements that were supposed to take place have never actually been practiced. So it's a word that doesn't have much meaning. So although it's a good step towards acknowledging the lands we're on, we also have to acknowledge that as well. And I prefer to just use, you know, ancestral land aside from treaty territory. But that's just a little bit of info for you guys. Um, so yeah, Ogoni Shell, these guys, we have them in lots of our sacred bundles nowadays. The medicine that I'm going to be using is sage. There's all different kinds of sages out there. Ours um, up here, I'm kind of forgetting what the name of it is, but it's scientifically proven that this medicine actually will lighten you. So how we use this, uh, we use medicines in all different kinds of ways, um, whether if it's poultices for healing wounds, if it's tea for sicknesses, uh, but this guy is when we light our medicine, our uh, traditional plants on fire and it creates a smoke. And so when we whip that smoke towards ourselves, it just cleanses us. Especially in this time when there's lots of that smokiness that's going around from the fires, uh, lots of our medicines can actually help purify and um, create better breathing for ourselves. So that's something that uh, is really useful and helpful in these times. Uh, so when I like this, if you don't have one with you, I just, you know, wish for you in that moment to just think about things that you are grateful for today. Um, and, you know, whether if that's five things, if that's one, always meet yourself where you're at. It's okay if you're not always doing the greatest because I know it's been a tough year for everybody. Um, as I'm smudging, I'll kind of share why I'm smudging in each area and kind of a guide if you ever do want to practice this and you learn teachings about it. Um, yes. As I'm sharing too, I you know it's kind of a, you know, short little intro, but if you guys have questions, I'll go check closer to the screen after and uh, we'll message you guys if you have anything. So feel free. There's no such thing as a bad question. So when we get this guy going and teaching is we don't blow on it because we just want that natural, that air to take care of us. That air that comes from those waters and our, and our uh, trees. I learned that, you know, that smoke, these forest fires are one of our number one polluters. And so in this time, we got to take care of ourselves with that, what we're breathing in. So as I smudge, I start off with my hands just to kind of cleanse whatever, because we use lots of our hands. Uh, I'll do over my head just for overall having that, um, you know, that just for yourself, right? Uh, and then a bit of a guide of what we share with our young people when we start them off smudging is we do our minds so that we can think good things every day. We do our eyes so that we can see good things, our nose so that we smell good things, our uh, ears so that we hear good things, our mouth so that we say good things. We'll do our heart so that we always feel good things. Then you can do wherever else that you may need a little extra love in your life. Some people will do their hair. Um, in many indigenous cultures, we believe that our hair carries our energy. It grows along with us, so our experiences stay with us. And so sometimes if they're negative, um, we want to make sure that we're, we're cleansing that and so that we always have that continuous self-care. Um, and then afterwards, some people will do their feet so that they walk in a good way. Uh, and then yeah, and that's kind of a little bit of our smudging ceremonies and uh, we have different medicines that will be specific for different things. Um, in order to be a medicine person, you need to know 230 medicines. So far in my journey, my goal is about 10 to 15 every year. And uh, that's one thing that I really love to share about. Uh, some other guys that we use are things like yarrow or children medicine, lavender for calming, um, cedar for, you know, a little bit of kindness in your day, sweetgrass, a really great scent. Um, so whenever you can support, you know, Indigenous folks in their medicines, whether that is through, sometimes we do offerings through money, but a lot of the time, whenever we ask or take anything from the land or from someone, we want that balance to take place. Instead of always taking, we want to make sure that person is feeling appreciated. So giving them a little bit of a gift. For us, we use tobacco, but that's not the same for every Indigenous nation. So I encourage you to look into those traditional practices in your areas whenever you ask an elder for um, some kind of information and how you can make them feel appreciated. 
so with that, we'll do a little bit of a song. Um, and then, yeah, and I believe that's kind of like the intro part. But uh, yeah, I just hope everyone's having a great day. Some folks, I had a presentation on Monday, so if I see you there, hello again. <laughs> um, I hit the drum four times before directions. This represents the four different levels of life. Um, and we do this that coincides with the sun and how it travels. So the sun starts, rises in the east. So that's our children. Um, our self is youth, west acknowledges our adults. So that might be some of you folks today. And then our north, the fourth push up that we do in a song is for our ancestors slash elders. So just a little, little thing there for you guys as well. When we sound this drum, it represents a heartbeat. The uh, heights that we use with this drum, they're all uh, from herbivore animals. It's like that circle of life, you like the movie Lion King, similar idea. So I'm going to share a horse song. It's kind of fun, it's fast, uh, love, the kids love it. Um, so yeah, really close thing. alongside other horses. So in its journey, sometimes they'll walk with each other and then they'll begin to gallop. And sometimes they'll start to race each other. So in life, we'll have hard times. Life will get really packed. It will get really difficult. Sometimes our relationships won't always be on the best side, but it's that reminder that life will always go back down and we come back to that centered horse that stands there nice, tall, beautiful, and proud. Um, aside from that, uh, before I guess we get into our next little bit, I just want to share, um, you know, for our teachers, our advisors who are joining me with us today, I strongly encourage, you know, um, a lot of our young people with Indigenous ancestry in our schools carry a lot, of course we all do, but more recently in a lot of, you know, intergenerational trauma and current systemic challenges every day. And so, if you can take that chance to try to educate yourself about that real history that sometimes is hidden from our different territories um, and bring insight and not try to say that you understand, but just be a listening ear um, and also to work with students at where they're at because, you know, as teenagers in general, alongside all these added on, um, you know, things that happen within our life, we need that support and patience, and that's a huge part of what got me to where I am today and was supported by teachers in my hard times of heaviness that didn't always affect all of my other students um, in my classroom. Uh, this could be, you know, things like the Truth and Reconciliation Act in Canada. That's a great thing to follow. The United Nations Declaration of Indigenous Rights. Um, and just learning that, 
Now, who are the people in your area? So what is that history? What are even just the basic starting points? Um, not being afraid to share that, even if you don't have indigenous ancestry, because our young people need to hear at least something aside from just nothing at all. Just share that in a kind way through your heart to say, this is where I learned it. And I'll, you know, share in the best way that I possibly can. Um, so with that, I'll say thank you to everybody. Thank you. Luana, thank you so much. For those of you, for those of you um, who came in a few minutes late, um, I am playing with my computer because it's making me confused. Sorry. Um, that's Luanna Moore, and she uh, is a graduate of the Seven Maples Met School. Seven Oaks Met, sorry. No, it's all good. That's our neighbors right down the road. Okay. <laughs> Um, and has been so generous about um, coming into our spaces when people in the Big Picture Learning Network have stepped forward saying we want to know and understand what this work is about. So Lauren, if you can pull up the slide deck. Uh, thank you again, Luana. And she's actually going to be um, leading a breakout room uh, in a few minutes um, for those of you who want to learn more about the boarding school legacy both in Canada and here in the United States. As we all know, we've been hearing a lot about that on the news. Um, so stay tuned if you want to hear more from Luana. Um, Lauren, can I control the screen or do you? I, I, I have it. It's on my computer. Oh, that's um, right. Okay. Yeah. I put the questions in the chat as well. There we go. Okay. So Perfect. Um, we're going to jump into a grounding exercise. Um, there's a bunch of us here, which is really exciting. Um, I want to start just by introducing myself for those of you who don't know who I am. My name is Holly Mater Sheehan, and I am working with Rose Hammock and a big crew of Native community partners to support our big picture learning schools to both indigenize their curriculum and their schools so that all students benefit from indigenous ways of knowing and understanding the world. And also that the native students that we support in our schools have access to the cultural and linguistic uh, curriculum and supports that they need to thrive. Um, and so we're gonna talk more about what Big Picture does in practice in a few, but we're gonna start with some breakout rooms um, Lauren's going to help us break us out into, you know, three or four people. Um, and we're asking you if you would take a second to answer these questions. Sorry, I hope you're still here. When you got switched back to host, it disabled, it disallowed me from making breakouts. So um, could you either put people in breakouts or make me host again? I'm going to make you host again. Thank you. Where are you, Lauren? Right here. <laughs> There, there we go. Yeah, 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 I'm back. Okay, thank oh, you. Okay. Sorry for that, y'all. Yeah. All right. Um, Questions are in. You want to do some breakout rooms for us? They are open. Great. And the questions are in the chat. Is everyone clear on their what we're doing? Tor, you want to jump into a into a room? Hey, Tor. Hi. If you're there and you want to jump into a room and introduce yourself, Eva, jump in. Hi. 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 I just put you in a room, Eva. I know. I declined. Well, I don't know where they're at. I don't want to interrupt them. I will wait here. I also don't know how long I'll stay. Okay. Hi, Eva. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. I'm so excited you're doing this session. Me too. I'm just trying to let uh, Rose in. So give me a second here. You missed a, uh, I'm going to, you missed a, a wonderful share from Luana. Luana? Luana, yeah. Luana from um, Canada? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went to her session yesterday. How was it? Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know. She always is. She is, always. She's predictably and boringly amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you know, if she could like be really bad one time, that might make it more interesting. Right. She know. really needs to mix it up. I, that's what I'm saying. Okay. This whole very... like anything that comes out of your mouth is brilliant and stage presence and engaging. Like it's just too consistent. I felt very uplifted and energized by her share. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Which is nice. That's a good thing to do. Nice new tats. How are we doing on time, Lauren? Uh, yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> um, Rose should be coming in any second. Once, so we've been in about two minutes. Oh, great. Okay. Time I'm going to, if it's cool with you, not share my screen while I should pause the recording. Dear. Welcome back, everybody. There's 60 seconds or 52 seconds left in the other one. 52 <laughs> seconds left. Rose. Hey. Rose. People, Rose, just so you know, Luana did like a most beautiful opening. And now everybody's in breakout groups and they were just sharing their names, what schools are, uh, you know, where they're from and what land, whose land they're on. And then maybe what brought them to this, to this workshop. And then we're going to have a little um, share out, a quick little share out, and then move on to like the nuts and bolts. Just so you're up to speed. Would you like for me to share? Sure, we're waiting for people to come back in. Okay. What brought you here? Is that what you mean? Or where you're coming? Oh yeah, I'll introduce you in a second. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Mondo! Holly, we're all back, Holly. We are, great. Welcome back everybody. We'd love to hear um, any kind of takeaways or anything that you heard about why folks are here or um, anything you'd like to share just to take a minute. Anything that, did anyone have to use the um, land, uh, nativeland.ca app or website? Um, I, I did because I've just moved. I, I, I knew a lot about the people where I was before, but I know nothing about the people who lived, who are here now. So that was exciting. So thank you for that, Lauren. I appreciate it a lot. I am so, I was hoping people needed to use it because it's such a cool <laughs> resource. If you didn't, if you didn't open that app or that uh, website right now, please do at some point. It's an awesome resource. You click on it and it'll show you whose ancestral land you're on and um, give you sort of links to more information about where you are. The students love to use it. It's an interactive map and it'll be on a list of resources at the end. I want to uh, introduce you to Rose Hammock. Um, she just joined us. She is the culture and language ambassador and she's a school design coach with us. She's gonna be doing a breakout room, but um, she had to come in late because she's always doing incredible things, but she's here co-facilitating with me. Armando's here. We have lots of OG uh, big picture learning folks um, that you're gonna get to know in a second. Um, I'm gonna try to just really give you a basic overview of what the big picture learning Native American initiative is. That's a question that gets asked all the time, understandably. And, and then we're gonna have an opportunity to go into breakout rooms to do a little more um, di you know, diving into some of the um, issues that we address and um, support in our schools. So I'm gonna ask Lauren to pull up the screen, uh, my, my slide deck for me, just to give me and all of you some context. Um, this is our agenda. Um, all right. Um, again, we'll do an overview. We'll do some breakout groups. We're going to have a group share out from those breakout groups. We're going to talk about some next steps and resources, and then we're going to close. People ask who we are. My name, again, is Holly Mater Sheehan. I'm, uh, I live in Oakland, California. And I am a non-native person living here. And um, I work in collaboration and in solidarity with native educators, community partners, uh, teachers, school administrators, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, Rose is our culture and language ambassador. She and I work very closely together. There are several advisory board members on here. 
Um, we are sort of governed isn't the right word, but we're um, directed by an incredible board of advisors. Uh, Emma here is on the advisory board. Armando, both of them are alumni. Um, Angelo Baca, who will probably pop in here and there in this is my co-director or the co-founder. We have um, a lot of advisors on this call right now who have been working with us for a long time. And of course, the Upstream Collaborative, who's our home, the Big Picture Learning Native American Initiative, um, or the Upstream Collaborative is, is our home. That's how we think of it. So um, thank you, Lauren. This is just a quick why. Illuminative is an incredible organization that we really look to. Um, it's indigenous led and they offer a lot of data and research about the experience of native students in schools. So this is just a little context. Do I, oh, I could- Holly, will you give me a thumbs up if the volume is coming out? Okay. Um, they don't look like Indians to me. children today aren't able to be dismissive of this, you know, mainstream story and imagery where we're not represented. And I think it has a deep psychological impact. I think it has to be really challenged and disrupted. And then we have to really begin to realize native characterization, you know, in a far more dimensionalized sort of way. We need to see native people as fully realized human beings. <laughs> is basically extermination. It's extermination by narrative. You know, the erasure of our people is so extensive that it has come to a point where uh, it's not even intentionally trying to discredit Native people. We're not even in the room. The story that's told about the country has to include the native version of the story or it's not accurate. Illuminative was established to address all of these problems. And Illuminative is about shifting power and it's about building a movement of many movements. Research showed that there's an incredible market demand for Native American stories and voices. And so there is an incredible opportunity here for Hollywood, entertainment, all kinds of, of institutions within pop culture to meet this audience demand that wants to hear Native stories. They want to know more, not only about Native history, but the contemporary realities and stories of Native peoples today. Native people have changed. We're fully contemporary. We are contributing to society. We exist in all domains and spaces of American society. Illuminative is addressing the distortion of Native American history and K through 12 education by working in partnership with students and parents. Illuminative is addressing the invisibility within pop culture and media and ensuring that native stories are being told. The time has come for this country to not only reconcile itself with its past, but its present. And only if we're going to build the future that we all want, we need to be able to move forward together. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Well. <laughs> Just in case you guys wanted to watch that again. <laughs> so as I mentioned, there are a lot of folks that are behind uh, the Native American Initiative. And um, we're gonna, in our breakout groups, address some of the things that we offer. Um, can you go to the next slide, Lauren? 
Um, but really, I think what's important to know that it's really mostly a, a grassroots effort and it's um, a community of alumni and tribes and advisors and students at the center always and mentors and social services. A lot of those people represented on this call. Um, Lauren, if you will uh, jump to the next slide. I think it's important to know that um, really our vision is for education equity and sovereignty and self-determination and what's been coined a land back movement. And um, if you're interested in learning and understanding more what we mean by that, I have some resources for you and I'm happy to expand on that. But that's sort of, those are the anchors for the work that we do and our core values. Keep going, Lou. So this is, you know, just some of, of what we do. I wanna emphasize that we're real place-based. So it depends on where your school is, who your community is, what the needs of your community is. You know, um, what I do and what we do with say South Valley and Ukiah may look very, and does look very different than even Healdsburg and Windsor in Northern California, which are just a couple, you know, maybe a hundred miles at most away because you know we have urban Indian communities and we have tribal communities and all of those all of those people and communities have different histories and needs and the the staff have different levels of understanding and so we really start with the needs assessment and then we really try to um, use and support the big picture learning design principles to um, support student interest driven culture based education um, and uh, so, so these are just some of the things that we, we do when a school partners with us. And again, we'll go deeper into this in our breakout groups. So it's 1.23 now. We have an amazing group of people here willing to talk about what they have been doing with the Native American Initiative um, with all of us. Um, these are some of the breakout groups. I thought that, uh, Lauren, that the numbers would work uh, just to number the breakout groups. If you want to learn more about um, the culture and language learning for the whole advisory, Rose Hammock and Tor Top um, and I did a deep dive this past year on Pomo people and plants and the whole advisory participated. Armando Ortiz is here. He's one of the founders of the Native American Initiative. He's an alumni of Highline and as well as Mickey Cavallo, who is from Windsor. They're willing to talk about a Native Student Alliance or student leadership development, if you're interested in that. There's also um, Emma Elliott, who's an alumni of Innovations in Reno, as well as a current student, Michael Gallant and Molly Thomas, who's a, a, an advisor at South Valley talking about, they're willing to talk about how they have participated in and how you can support culture and language based independent projects for students, both native and non. Um, Lizzie, if she's here and myself can talk about what it looks like to build authentic community partnerships that often lead to leaving to learn opportunities and internships in native communities around our school. Um, and then Shannon Johnson, who's an advisor at Windsor has been doing some awesome work um, researching and compiling some indigenous curriculum. And then last, lastly, Luana, who opened us up, she's an alumni of um, Seven, Seven Oaks uh, up in Winnipeg, has been willing to share and enlighten some of us about the recent findings, if you're not familiar, um, of children who were buried at boarding schools. Um, and this is a legacy that both the US and Canada experience and most settler colonial societies, unfortunately, um, schools used as a form of forced assimilation and genocide and uh, the legacy and, and the ways that those that legacy still impacts and continues to impact the students that we work with today. So Lauren, if you don't mind uh, having folks just choose their breakout rooms. They are all open and I change the, they're by the title of the. There's still 47 seconds left in the other rooms.
I wanted control over when I was going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want control. You're breaking up with me? No, I'm going to break up with you first. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Green Wheel. Check it out. Are folks still coming out? Yes. Okay. We just have about nine more minutes. Um, people are jumping out. Too exciting. Lauren's going to take some notes, um, and we would love to hear what some of your takeaways were, some of your burning questions, um, your thoughts, maybe some ideas for next steps for how the Native American Initiative can support you or whatever it is that you wanna share. Um, and we're gonna share the, uh, the slide deck with you and, and those notes will be there for you to look at as well. Does we anyone? needed more time. I know it's it's so hard with these workshops are so short. But it's just meant to be a taste. What did what did people hear in some of your workshops or in your uh, breakout groups? I can share. Uh, so Holly, thank you for sharing with me about the Red Bud resource group because okay. that is in my area. Okay. And um, then I can go to the casino to get into contact with people. Great. But I already looked them up online and I think that they're gonna be a really fantastic uh, partner for us. And we have not worked with them before. So I really appreciate that resource. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we had a request in our session, like for the smaller schools um, that maybe only have one or two students that have a great interest, would that be appropriate to have them connected directly to you, Holly, so that you can, you know, connect them with other Native students? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's what we did just um, this past year during COVID. We've had Native Student Alliances in five or six different schools in Northern California. But instead, we created a cohort this year of students from all of those schools. Um, and it was really beautiful the way that they just connected with each other. And Rose, Rose led that with culture and language learning. Um, and it was very successful. So I would love to um, please, you know, when I give you the form to fill out, that'll give us an opportunity to, to connect back with you. Um, let us know that that's something you're looking for and we'll make that happen. Thanks, Shannon. Anyone else with some takeaways or some thoughts they want to share? Just, just was uh, I think sometimes um, the capacity for inhumanity to other other human beings and people and everything is is so overpowering. It's terrifying. Um, but the way that the the, the poison, the grace that Joanna was talking about, what was a deeply personal as well as a national tragedy, was just more than inspirational. And I think we we came in today. To one of the sessions with Marvin Gaye, you know, and he says, "All we ask of us is we show each other love," and you know, and we 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 have so much of that, and we we can go back against it. I just was really want to be thankful for that set. It was incredible that session, it really was. Thank you, Colin, and thank you, Luana. Anyone else from another group? How did the uh, Pomo people and plants deep dive? Work, uh, go for the, uh, sorry, the culture and language learning in your whole advisory group. Anyone wanna share anything? That went, it went pretty well. Rose, Rose had us examine um, different, different um, interfaces with students and whether they would be positive or negative, um, different sorts of characteristics. What I always learn when Rose speaks. And as Rose was speaking, the phrase indigenize my curriculum is very generic for me. And I struggle to peel that onion into specific and make sense of it in my practice. And um, as Rose was burning medicine and discussing the impact of that on our students, it occurred to me that one way to indigenize my curriculum is to just powerfully focus on process instead of product. Instead of good morning students, get out your pencils and do something and make shit. 
I can say, hey, we're all together and this is really cool and it's beautiful and spiritual and loving. And let's focus on that for a minute and just sit with that. And then we'll get to whatever it is we need to get to. Nice. Thank I don't you. know whether that came from our workshop, but it felt like something I wanted to share. Nice. Mondo, how was the uh, NSA? Did you get some folks to talk about that with you? Yeah, yeah, I did. I got um, Ben and Pedro. Uh, they came through. Shout out to the small and mighty team. And then <laughs> always Mickey brought the great energy, you know, so we was in there doing our thing. Uh, just really talking about um, what student-centered uh, leadership looks like, right? And, uh, you know, as somebody who is a former, a former student, understanding what giving up that power looks like, you know, to students, right? When they're owning their own, uh, their own learning, their own teachings on how they can use that to connect back to either projects or curriculum that they want to develop for themselves, right? Um, and then also just cultivating a space to where you can have a really real authentic and meaningful conversations about identity and about breaking down, uh, you know, the stigmas around uh, feelings around identity and things like that, so. Thanks, Amanda. Am I forgetting any of the groups? Who am I forgetting? Emma, how did it go? Um, Emma was there with Molly and they talked about supporting culture and language-based independent projects. Anyone want to share about that? I think it went well. <laughs> Always not enough time. Um, yeah. And I think it's really hard to be able to be like, give a, a general idea for every specific student and uh, since they're an individual, like how would I support this one? Or how would I support that one? Yeah. Um, I think it's just advocating for them and really listening to their words and mm -hmm. I think. So we're winding down, it's 57 after. Um, I promised some um, resources um, and also uh, an easy way for you all to connect to us. So Lauren, if you would pop up the slide deck again. And I also put it in the chat. Perfect. Lauren put the the link to a Google form. Super simple. Uh, can help you, uh, you know, or you could help us to stay connected with you just by dropping your name and what school you're at and some of what you're interested in doing. And then we will get back to you quickly within the next couple of weeks to um, get you connected both with like a one on one consult and also opportunities to do an orientation if it is something that you want to do um, as a whole school, be part of the Native American initiative and just get you some more information. Um, on this slide deck, as you can see here, are our very favorite indigenous curriculum resources. They certainly aren't all, um, but if you are just looking, or not just, but if you're looking for an opportunity to think more deeply about what it means to bring indigenous ways of knowing and understanding the world into your schools, into your advisories, into your students, and into your staff. These are some really uh, well-designed, well, -designed, well uh, Indian led, like these are uh, curriculum resources that have been designed by indigenous people for this purpose, which is really important in a web, you know, in the web world of 100 gazillion really questionable teaching resources that aren't authentic or are misleading. So, Lauren, did you drop the link to the chat uh, to the slide deck into? Indeed. Okay, great. So you can also get the slide deck, you guys, which will have all of that. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is drop our email, which um, you are all welcome to contact us. It's just BPLNAI at bigpicturelearning.org. Um, so if you want to contact us directly, 
um, between now and when you hear from us after you uh, fill out your form, please do and we'll get back to you. Uh, Rose, do you want to like to have a closing last last word or anything and just send us off in a good way if you're up for it? Yeah, I just want to, um, you know, leave everybody with those thoughts, you know, to to remember that not only are our young people learning things from us, we learn a lot from our young people too. And so just remembering that we're all teachers, but we're also all students and that we need to remember to provide space for our young people to, to teach us things, to, to just have those conversations with us and with their peers. And just to remind them that they're powerful and that we're here to support them in all the ways that we can. And if there's something that they're yearning for, you know, and we, we can't provide it, just remember that there's this whole network out here to help support you, help support the students. And it's all about the young people at the end of the day. Um, so very grateful that I could be here and very grateful to um, see all of these people determined to help all the young people in their communities. Just very grateful that I've had the opportunity to work with students from all over, so thank you. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, everybody.